Happy New Year and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be testing out and sharing some sewing hacks that I've seen across social media. Before we get started, it's been way overdue for an introduction. So if you're new here, my name is April and my channel is Coolerpa, which is the word cool and my name backwards added to it. My channel is all about sewing and thrifted transformations and I've been YouTubing for over 10 years now. But outside of that, some of my hobbies are watching anime, drawing and painting, dancing and traveling. I also wanted to mention that Eric and I are moving soon so this might be the last time you see me film in this sewing room. And with that said, I hope you enjoy this video and let's test out these sewing hacks. Sewing trick number one. This first sewing trick is for when you're hemming jeans or really thick material. I have a bunch of jeans right here because my dad asked me to hem his pants for him. And I would just do the simple method where you get to keep the original hem and stitching of the pants, but because the bottom of these ones are all ripped up, um, we're going to cut them short and re-hem them. When hemming jeans, you'll notice that when you get to the side seams right here, it's super bulky and difficult to sew over. Some of you probably have even broken a needle trying to sew over this. Method number one is to cut the bulkiness right here away. And I'm only gonna cut it the size of my hem, which is 5 8 Now you can fold over the raw edge once twice, and then hem as usual with less bulk. The second method you can use is great for this side because this side isn't as bulky and it's normally not top stitched down so you can lift it up like this. So the second method is to make two snips, about 5 eighths again, and you want to cut two but not through that stitching and you want to make another one the same height above it. Just flip the middle piece over to the opposite side and hem as usual. You can see how easy it was for me to run the denim through my machine. Normally, I would have to stop and sew slowly in case my machine jams or to avoid breaking a needle. So this is what it looks like. Like I said, this part will be raw, but it's not a problem at all. And the rest looks amazing. And then this is what method two looks like. This trick is my official go-to for hemming pants or any heavy materials. And you should definitely try this one out. Sewing hack number two. This trick is useful to evenly line up and hold your hooks in place for hand sewing. First, evenly mark the spacing of your hooks. I thought they used a tapestry needle to create the holes, but I think they just had a large hand sewing needle. But basically, you want to poke your needle through one layer of fabric and bring it back out near the edge. I recommend wiggling your needle in between the holes to stretch it out enough so that the hook can fit through. With the hook faced upside down, hook it into the first hole and bring it out the second. The example looked a lot easier, but I think I just need some practice. I also wanted to mention that you should keep the distance of your holes pretty close or as big as the size of your hook. If you make them too far apart, then the fabric will bunch up in the middle. 
I love that this sewing hack does a great job at holding the hook in place for hand sewing, but make sure to use a large sewing needle to create the holes instead of a tapestry needle like me, and always test out this technique on some scrap fabric first. Sewing trick number three. Loops can be tedious to sew because they move around and you end up sewing them out of place. To solve that issue, just grab some masking tape, evenly mark the placement of your loops on the tape, then simply stick your loops on. You want to stick your loops all the way to the side of the tape edge instead of in the middle like me. I'll explain why later. Now you can line up the edge of the tape with the edge of your fabric and sandwich the loops in between. You can just sew as usual over the tape. Afterwards, just remove the tape from both sides. My loops turned out so beautiful. I think it's the best loops I've ever sewn. The only thing is that when you're sticking it on the tape, I recommend you stick it all the way to the edge. Because the edge of the tape lines up with the edge of the fabric, the loops should also be lined up with the edge so they get caught in the seam allowance. Because I didn't stick the loops all the way to the edge, they kind of got cut off short. So they barely got attached into the seam. This is such a great sewing hack though and in the future I'm always going to use this for all my loop sewing. All right, sewing trick number four. This next hack is to use paper clips to hold your fabric together while you sew. This one seems really basic but I thought it was useful because paper clips are inexpensive and you might already own some at home. What I thought was cool about using paper clips is that you can slide it while you sew, which means you probably don't need to use that many. Sewing hack number five. I saw on Instagram that someone used men's clippers as an electric seam ripper, so let's try it out. So I'm going to turn it on, and then, oh, there it goes. They actually do sell electric seam rippers for sewing, but if I'm being honest, I never knew that existed or seen it used before. I was curious to see if it would tear my fabric, and it didn't, but definitely test it out on your scraps before using. Of course, we had to have a competition to see if the clippers are actually faster. I'm using a seam ripping blade and Eric is using the clippers. It's funny because Eric had a hard time getting started with the clippers at first because of the back stitching, so I was way ahead. But once he got started, he beat me by just a few seconds. He did make a hole in the fabric though because he was rushing, so I think I still win. But seriously, if you try using the clippers, please be careful doing so, and that goes for any of the seam rippers as well. I'm not too sure how well this is gonna work on all fabric, but it's worth a try. Sewing trick number six. This sewing trick teaches you how to efficiently make a super long strip of bias tape. Depending on how much bias tape you need, cut out a square that is bigger or smaller. For this example, my square is only 12 by 12 inches. Next, fold the square in half into a triangle and crease the fold so when you unfold it, you have a guideline to cut. Flip one of the triangle pieces over so the two layers are facing right sides together and sew along the top. I want to make my folded bias tape a half inch in size, so I measured one I had at home so I know how wide to make my strips. The measurement was one and three quarters of an inch. I opened up the fabric so the wrong side is up and marked lines one and three quarters inch apart. You should also go ahead and press your seam here while it's flat.
Flip your fabric over and connect the lines along the diagonal edge. I thought I was just supposed to match up the lines and sew it back together, but after I sewed the diagonal seam closed and started cutting, I realized I did it wrong. <gasps> I'm confused. I think I did it wrong. Because it shouldn't have like come out separately. So let's try again. Once you had the lines matched up here, you're actually supposed to offset it by one line. Now I can pin it together and sew it closed. Lastly, cut out your long strip of bias tape by following the lines you marked. Again, making sure to press your seams before doing so. I love and appreciate this method so much because I always struggle attaching strips together to create a long bias tape. Using this method, the seams are already sewn diagonally for you, which reduces the bulk when you fold it over and sew. I also wanted to share this handy bias tape maker, which will evenly fold your fabric so you can quickly press it with your iron. The pack I have comes in different sizes so you can make different size bias tape, and I'll link it in my description box for anyone interested in getting one. Now that we've made our own bias tape, on to sewing trick number seven. This hack is great for those that don't own a bias tape binding foot. You can create your own guide using cardstock. I cut out a piece of cardstock the same size as my bias tape and then fold the sides to the middle and crease it with my scissors. Place your bias tape inside and make sure it's the correct size and then fold the paper in half again. Now we're ready to sew. Line up the bias tape under your needle and then tape the top of the paper down on your machine. Place the second tape on the inside of the paper to hold it still. Sandwich your fabric in the middle and start sewing. It takes a minute to get used to sewing with the cardstock, but I learned that you shouldn't try to press down on the paper too much or else the fabric won't move. I was super curious to see if my needle caught both sides of the bias tape, and it did! Next, I wanted to test it out on a curved neckline. At first, it was sewing okay, but once the neckline started curving more, it was hard to control. So I think this might work best on straighter edges, or maybe I have to really twist and turn the fabric more. Overall, I think this is a great and useful hack for keeping your bias tape lined up for sewing, at least for straight edges. If you have any more sewing techniques that you've seen or that you know of that you want me to try out in the next video, let me know down in the comments or tag me on Instagram, DM me the video on Instagram or tag me on TikTok, whatever it is, share it with me and I hope to make another one of these videos. See you next time. Bye!